Catholic family. Maximilian Kolbe, Evangelization and Martyrdom. I was given this book as a present. Is it an adventure book? It's the life of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Oh, right. The life of a saint. A saint who was killed by Nazi soldiers in the concentration camp at Auschwitz. So, so are there, are there soldiers in the book? There are soldiers with machine guns and prisoners trying to escape. Great! Hey, will you read the story to me? Yes, please, Dad. Okay. Well, uh, here we go. During the Second World War, the Nazis built enormous prisons where they sent hundreds of prisoners. These prisons were called concentration camps. Someone escaped. I hope he makes it. What are you saying? You know what will happen if he does make it. They'll kill ten of us. Holy Mother, help him to escape from this hell. On your feet. One of your comrades has escaped. So ten of you are going to starve to death in the punishment block. You, step forward. You. The sergeant picked ten prisoners to be locked up in a prison cell and left to starve to death. And you? Me? Please, sir, have pity on me. I'm a father with a family. My wife, my children. Get up. I'm begging you, please. I don't want to die. I will take his place. What did you say? I said that I am willing to give my life in exchange for his. So you want to be a hero? Very well. I don't care which of you two dies. You're all just numbers to me. Take them to the punishment cell. Who's the man with the glasses? Hmm. Father Maximilian Colby, sir. A Catholic priest. He's so brave! Did he die? Yes. He was a saint and a martyr. He must have been a real superhero to do that. <laughs> Saints are even braver than superheroes. Wow. Do you know how he became such a brave man? When he was a boy, his country, Poland, was invaded by the Russians and all expression of religious belief was banned. If the Russian soldiers heard you praying, they would throw you in jail. They might even kill you. Because of this, Maximilian's parents had a little altar hidden inside a wardrobe. And Maximilian went to pray there every day. The Virgin of Czestochowa is the patron saint of Poland. The people have a great devotion to her. You'd have to be very brave to do that. Yes, because if the soldiers found the altar... It would have been a terrible tragedy. 
But Maximilian's parents were very devoted Catholics, and their faith was greater than the threat from the soldiers. Did they pray in secret? Yes. It so happened that one day, Maximilian, well, I should say, Raymond. Raymond? Yes. You see, his real name was Raymond. When he entered the Franciscan order, he became Maximilian. Well, what happened was, one day, when he was a boy, Raymond got into a spot of trouble. Raymond, what you have done is very bad. If you carry on behaving like this, my child, who knows what will become of you? From that day on, Maximilian's attitude changed. He became a very quiet and serious boy. His parents were a little puzzled. I'm worried about Raymond. I don't know. Ever since I scolded him that time, he hasn't been himself. Something has happened to him. Yes, I've noticed it too. We have to talk to him. Hmm. Oh. He really was a different boy. Maximilian had changed completely. He still prayed, as always, but when he prayed, he also cried. His mother saw him crying in prayer, and she became worried. Raymond, my child, what's the matter? Well, Mother, do you remember the day you told me off? Oh, of course I remember. You haven't been the same since. Do you remember what you said to me? Mm, I don't remember the exact words. You said, my child, who knows what will become of you? Yes, now I remember. Well, those words made me think really hard. And I asked the Virgin to let me see what would become of me. I asked her many times, until one day, the Virgin appeared to me. Do you want these two crowns? In her hand, she held two crowns, a white one and a red one. The white one meant that I would always remain pure. And the red one meant that I would be a martyr. Mother, I accept them both. And then the Virgin looked at me with great tenderness and disappeared. From that moment on, his mother had an intuition that her son would die as a martyr. Did the Virgin really appear to him? Of course! You don't think it was just his imagination, do you? It was all real. So real that Maximilian was transformed. As soon as he could, he entered the Franciscan Order, along with his brother. The Feast of the Immaculate Conception is less than a month away, so I thought I would form an apostolic group. The group will be called the Friends of the Immaculate Conception in honor of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Oh, Maximilian Kolbe! That's the story Father told us! I see you already know something about this saint. Yes, we know he was very brave. Maximilian founded an apostolic group called the Militia of the Immaculata, whose main task was to edit a monthly magazine, which was called The Night of the Immaculata. And we're going to print a magazine, too. Great! We'll be journalists! Yes! Everyone will read our magazine, and we'll be famous! Now, now. The magazine is important, but it's not the most important thing. And neither is the fame. Oh, no? No. Let's see what Maximilian said. Don't forget, boys. The important thing is not collecting subscriptions, but saving souls. It's very important that millions of copies of the night are printed. But it's even more important that each one is sent with a prayer. Because every edition must be made with prayer. The aim of our group and this magazine is to convert the whole world through devotion to the Blessed Virgin.
Maximilian was very devoted to the Virgin Mary. Well, our first edition will come out on the 8th of December, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, so we have to really get down to business. But before we start, let's go to church to pray that the magazine does a lot of good. When he was young, Maximilian always prayed in the front pew so that he wouldn't be distracted by the people entering and leaving the church. Let's follow his example. Mom, did you know that Maximilian wanted to convert the whole world, even Japan? When he had to take long train journeys, he used to take the chance to preach to his fellow passengers. The Virgin is our mother and is the sure path that leads us to heaven. She makes us feel very loved, especially loved, as a good mother loves her child. If we are devoted to the Virgin, she will take us to her son, our Lord Jesus. Maximilian loved all the latest technology. He didn't just start a magazine. He also founded a radio station when at the time there was only one Catholic radio station in the whole world, Vatican Radio. In those days, this was something very difficult to achieve. Wow, he was a great Catholic journalist. Yes, he was. I want to be a journalist too. You know what? We're going to publish a magazine at church. Then I want to start a radio station to broadcast to the whole city. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. But starting magazines and radio stations is not the most important thing. The most important thing is to be a saint. Oh? To be a saint? Yes, that's what you should aim for. I want you to be saints and great saints. Father, isn't that asking too much? No, holiness isn't a luxury. It's a duty and a family commitment. God wants it. Be holy because I am holy. Every child should emulate their mother. Our mother is the Immaculate Virgin, the Holy Virgin, so we should be holy. But being holy is very difficult. No, my children. It's simple and easy. Do you have a piece of chalk? I'm gonna write the formula for holiness right here on the blackboard. The lowercase w is our will, the uppercase w, the will of God. When these wills clash, it causes pain and suffering. When these two wills coincide, that is to say, when we do what God asks, we have peace in our hearts. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. And it is. Life is short, so we must use our time to the full, because we only live once. We must be holy, not by halves, but completely, for the glory of the Immaculate Virgin and the greater glory of God. I have some bad news for you. The delivery van has broken down, so on December oh? 7th we'll have to deliver the magazines on foot. Come on. I need a volunteer to help me. Nobody wants to volunteer? Well then, we'll just have to draw lots. Phew! It's a good thing we weren't picked. Yeah, that was close. Guys, would you mind doing it? Sorry, but you picked the short straw. Yeah, we've got tickets for the football final. 
but it's just that it's the day I have to visit my grandfather in hospital. I go every Saturday. Listen, do you know how difficult it was to get hold of these tickets? But my grandfather will be very sad if I don't go see him. Well, I'm really sorry. I'm going to read you the part that tells us how Maximilian died. He spent 14 days locked up in the cell. They wanted to starve him to death? That's right. He was locked up in there with the other nine prisoners. His fellow prisoners were dying one by one. Don't despair, brother. Have faith. It's difficult to have faith, father. I'm dying. <coughs> Your suffering has greater worth than you realize. Greater worth? Who cares about my suffering? We are all just numbers here, don't you understand? You are wrong, brother. To God, we are not just a number. We are his children. Kiss the Virgin. She will give you strength to die in peace. Mary is the path that leads to Jesus. Rest in peace, my son. Rest in peace. Has another one died? You don't even have the strength to speak, huh? Hey, come on, help me drag out another corpse. And did St. Maximilian die like that too? Not exactly. You see, as the days went by, his fellow prisoners kept dying, but he defied starvation. He was sick and close to death, but even so he found the strength to comfort his friends as they died. After 14 days, the soldiers decided to give him a lethal injection to kill him. Oh! When he died, the soldiers said he was a real man. And he went through all that because he'd taken the other man's place. Hmm. Yes, that was his martyrdom. And what happened to the other man? He managed to survive in Auschwitz until it was liberated by the Allied troops. And all thanks to St. Maximilian. You know, one time, when he was a boy, Maximilian wrote down a resolution in his diary. Devote oneself to others, even until the supreme sacrifice. And that's what he did. John, look, I've been thinking about what you said and about your grandfather, and I've decided to swap places with you. I'll go and deliver the magazine so that you can go and visit him. It's okay, don't worry. Your grandfather is more important than going to a match. You're welcome, bye. I think what you've done is wonderful. I'm very proud of you, and I'm sure the Virgin is very happy. Today is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and I'd like to tell you all a little bit about St. Maximilian Kolbe. He founded the biggest Catholic religious community in the world called Niepokalanov, which is in Poland. It had 800 Franciscan friars who were dedicated to spreading the word about devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary throughout the world. They ran several printing presses and printed many apostolic publications. The devotion to the Virgin fills us with peace and happiness. Jesus, please let the magazine we've been delivering help people to love you and the Virgin Mary more. I ask you this through the intercession of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Amen. You know, my dear, I think we have two wonderful children. Yes, I'm very proud of them. I hope the life of St. Maximilian teaches them how to love the Virgin Mary. <laughs>